Chapter 1. Why Breathing Correctly is Important Your breathing is the most important function in life. Oxygen is vital for life, and your lungs are constantly working to bring oxygen into your body. Breathing is a two-way street. It not only allows oxygen into the body, but also helps remove carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. If you suffer from chronic stress or anxiety, then your breathing patterns will likely be affected as well. And this can lead to an imbalance of CO2 levels in the bloodstream, which can lead to dizziness or fainting spells when standing up suddenly after sitting or lying down for long periods of time. There's also evidence that poor breathing habits may contribute to future cardiovascular disease risks, such as high blood pressure and heart attack symptoms. So if you've recently noticed yourself experiencing shortness of breath or chest pain while exercising, it's critical not only now, but also in the future. Chapter 2. Who were the Pulmonauts? The Pulmonauts were a group of people who made it their mission to breathe at an extreme rate. They achieved this feat by breathing in large amounts of air and then exhaling before they passed out. This meant that they could hold their breath for up to 10 minutes without dying, which sounds like an impressive achievement. The goal was to be able to do so without discomfort or pain, but most Pulmonauts still experienced some discomfort when breathing too fast. The purpose behind these exercises was simple. The more oxygen you can get into your body quickly, the better off you'll be in a fight or flight situation. The ability for someone's lungs to expand rapidly means there's a less chance of running out of breath during stressful situations such as combat or track running or anything else where one needs endurance. Chapter 3 Disevolution in Our Breathing Capacities Human beings have been evolving for millions of years. Our lungs, however, have not evolved much in that time. The result is that we now tend to breathe using only a small part of our lung capacity, which means we are depriving our bodies of much needed oxygen. What's even more interesting and potentially problematic is that most people don't realize that they're breathing too shallowly until they experience symptoms such as low energy levels and poor sleep quality. This disparity between the true need for air and how much we actually breathe can lead to serious health issues like chronic fatigue syndrome or sleep apnea, even heart disease. Chapter 4 Automatic Breathing versus Voluntary Breathing When you breathe, it's mostly an automatic process. The automatic nervous system controls this vital function of life, but you can also control your breathing consciously. Breathing is controlled by two parts of the brain. One part regulates heart rate, blood pressure, and other involuntary functions, the sympathetic nervous system. And the other part controls voluntary actions such as speech or movement, the parasympathetic nervous system. These systems are constantly communicating with each other. For example, it's possible to become fatigued from excessive exercise if not enough oxygen is reaching your muscles through the sympathetic response. The type of breathing you do depends on which part of your brain has been activated at any given time. But generally speaking, when we say someone is taking a deep breath, we mean that they are consciously activating their parasympathetic response in order to slow down their heart rate and physically relax themselves in preparation for doing something challenging or stressful. Chapter 5. Breathing to Heal Our Nervous System the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the rest and digest functions that occur when we're at ease. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response, which occurs in response to stressors. When we're stressed out, our breathing changes from a slow and rhythmic pattern to an irregular one. This can lead to a state of hyperventilation, rapid breathing, or hypoventilation, slow or shallow breathing both of which can cause serious medical problems over time if left untreated. Overbreathing can also increase blood pressure and heart rate, making a person feel lightheaded or dizzy. Fortunately, there's an easy fix, diaphragmatic breathing. To do this correctly, start by lying down in your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Then take a deep breath through your nose so that your belly expands, like you're blowing up a balloon inside yourself but don't fill it completely full yet. Once your lungs are about half full, this may be hard at first, 
Hold that position for three seconds before exhaling slowly through pursed lips for about six seconds, allowing most of what was just breathed in to come back out, and voila, you're doing diaphragmatic breathing correctly now. Chapter 6 Breathing to Control Our Immune Response James Nestor, author of Breathwork, A Practical Guide to Natural Respiration, explains how breathing is crucial to our immune system. He says that our autonomic nervous system controls how we breathe. When we aren't paying attention or are stressed out, the sympathetic nervous system causes us to inhale quickly and exhale slowly. This is called shallow breathing. When we are relaxed or asleep, our parasympathetic nervous system triggers slow, deep inhalations and exhalations. This is called full breathing. Both these types of breathing can be good for us. Shallow breaths provide more oxygen than full breaths do, but also more CO2, carbon dioxide, which helps us maintain an alkaline pH in our bodies, something that's important for health. On the other hand, rapid shallow breaths trigger stress responses in the body, such as increased heart rate or blood pressure, while slower full breaths help calm down those same systems so they don't overreact when they shouldn't be working overtime. Trying to keep up with stressful situations every day, like work deadlines or heavy traffic on the way home from work. Chapter 7. Breathing to Treat Anxiety Breathing can be a powerful tool for self-control. When you're feeling anxious or stressed, take a few minutes to calm your body and focus on breathing deeply. The more focused you are on your breathing, the less room for emotional thoughts that cause anxiety. Slowly breathe in through your nose and then out your mouth, counting each breath as it passes by. One, two, three. Repeat this process until you feel relaxed enough to return to whatever task needs attention. If slow breathing alone doesn't help reduce anxiety, try using visualization techniques to quiet the mind when necessary. Imagine yourself relaxing in a safe place on a beach or mountaintop, and breathe slowly while focusing on how good you feel. This technique is often used during yoga classes. Visualize an image of something calming whenever stress begins creeping up on you during the day. This could be anything from an object like an orange flower blossom, or an animal such as a koala bear, if nothing else works. Chapter 8. How to Control Cortisol Levels Through Breathing if you've ever been told to breathe, this probably sounds like a pretty basic tip, but it's the simplicity of breathing exercises that makes them so effective in increasing your focus and helping you manage stress. The reason for this is because cortisol levels increase during stressful events, creating an intense feeling of anxiety or panic. This can lead to sleepless nights and bad days at work, or even worse, serious health issues such as heart disease and diabetes later on in life. By practicing deep breathing exercises before bedtime every night and throughout the day when possible, you can lower your cortisol levels while also reducing stress throughout the day. As an added bonus, deep breathing can help you fall asleep faster if you're having trouble getting to sleep due to racing thoughts or stressors outside of your bedtime hours. Chapter 9 why you must breathe through your nose and not your mouth. The nose is the best route to take when it comes to breathing. This may seem counterintuitive, but nasal breathing is a more natural way of drawing air into your lungs than mouth breathing. The reason for this has to do with the size of your nasal passages and how they interact with nerves that send signals from these passages to other parts of your body. The nasal passages are wider than those that lead into your throat, the pharynx. Consequently, they're able to bring more oxygen into contact with the delicate cells lining their walls than breathing through your mouth alone, or even both nostrils at the same time. Chapter 10 How to Practice Nadi Shodhana Nadi Shodhana is a breathing technique that balances the two sides of the body, left and right. It can be done at any time, but it's most effective before bed or when you're stressed out. To practice Nadi Shodhana, Wrap your thumb and ring finger around your nostrils with one hand. Press down gently to seal off the right nostril while inhaling through your left nostril. Then, 
close off your left nostril with your ring finger, allowing air to flow only from the right side of your nose, while simultaneously exhaling through both nostrils. Repeat this process 10 times, alternating between inhaling through each side of your nose in turn. Once finished, breathe normally again, that is, single nostrally, until ready for another round. Chapter 11. Exhale slowly to increase your lung capacity. Another tip to increase your lung capacity is to exhale slowly. While in a normal breath, you may exhale for about two seconds. However, when trying to increase your lung capacity, you should stretch this out for five seconds at the very least. Another option is to hold the exhalation for seven to nine seconds before taking another inhalation breath. This way, when you're breathing twice as long on your exhalation than your inhalation, this will help expand both your chest and abdominal cavities and increase oxygen intake. Exhaling slowly also helps balance out the amount of carbon dioxide that gets released from each respiratory system cycle at rest. Carbon dioxide levels can become too high when breathing fast or shallowly, so slowing down allows more time for carbon dioxide removal by diffusion through alveoli into pulmonary capillaries before being transported by red blood cells throughout your body, where it can be used again by tissues during cellular respiration processes. Chapter 12. What is hyperventilation? Hyperventilation is when you breathe too fast, which removes too much carbon dioxide from your lungs. When this happens, it causes lightheadedness and tingling in the hands and feet. It can also cause panic attacks or feelings of unreality. And if you're at a high altitude, hyperventilation can even make you pass out. Hyperventilation can be triggered by stress or anxiety about something, such as an upcoming event, or by high altitude, if not adjusted for. If you think that hyperventilation might be contributing to your symptoms, try taking deep breaths from your diaphragm rather than shallow ones from your chest. This will slow down your breathing rate without removing as much oxygen. Chapter 13. The Dangers of Hyperventilation Hyperventilation, or breathing too quickly, can lead to a drop in carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in your blood. This might cause you to feel dizzy and lightheaded. It also makes it harder for your heart to pump blood around your body and may lead to a drop in blood pressure. That is why hyperventilation is dangerous. It can make you less alert, move slower, and be more prone to injury if something requires physical exertion. So take care not to overbreathe when you're new to strenuous exercise or haven't done it recently enough that your muscles aren't used to being pushed hard for long periods of time without rest breaks. Chapter 14. Being Conscious of Hypoventilation, Slow Breathing. Take a deep breath. Now let it out. If you're like most people, you've probably never thought about how much time goes between these two actions. For most of us, breathing is something we do subconsciously. Our lungs inhale and exhale without any effort from our brain or muscles. We just breathe automatically without thinking about it at all. But what if there were ways to change this? What if there was a way for us to control our breathing patterns? And not only that, what if doing so had positive effects on our health and overall well-being? This is where hypoventilation comes in. In the following chapters, you'll learn more about the benefits of slow breathing and how to do it properly. Chapter 15. How to Increase Your Chest Cavity When you inhale, your stomach should expand slightly. When your stomach expands, the diaphragm moves down, which increases the size of your chest cavity. This creates space for more oxygen to enter your lungs. When you exhale, make a strong sound like puh as you breathe out. Hold that breath for a few seconds, then breathe in again slowly through your nose and feel it going up into your chest. Repeat this process three times during breathing breaks. Do this ten times each day, or at least once or twice daily until you're able to easily do it without thinking about it too much, just like with any new habit. Chapter 16. Chew slowly and longer to breathe better. When you chew slowly, you are breathing better. Chew longer and your nose will open up. 
you can breathe through your nose and mouth at the same time. Sometimes we don't know how to do this because we've been taught to breathe through our mouths only. The more air we take into our bodies, the easier it is for us to think clearly and also feel better emotionally as well. By chewing longer, we create space in our throats, which allows us to breathe easier by using our diaphragm instead of using just the upper chest muscles and causing lack of oxygen. As soon as the food reaches your stomach, resume eating again slowly but mindfully until you finish all the food on your plate. Then, don't eat anything else while waiting for the next meal. Chapter 17. What is Resonant Breathing? Resonant breathing is a method of breathing at the same rate as your heart, which is called the resonant frequency. In order to do this, you need to breathe in and out as if you're listening to music. If you can hear two notes at once, then they are both playing at the same frequency. In resonant breathing, you breathe in and out at the same pace so that your body's natural rhythms are in sync with one another and with the other rhythms around you, like when people clap or sing in unison. Resonant breathing synchronizes brain waves and heartbeats, which also happens during meditation, but does not change their frequency like meditation does. Chapter 18. How to Practice Tun Mo Breathing The Tun Mo breathing technique can be practiced in many ways. The most basic form is to take a deep breath in through your nose, hold for 5 seconds, then breathe out through your nose for 10 seconds, before holding the breath for an additional 10 seconds. Repeat this cycle three to five times before taking a break to breathe normally again. You can also practice by adding different elements to increase difficulty. If you're not used to breathing slowly and calmly like this, which isn't for everyone, start with doing just two or three cycles of the above method each day until you feel comfortable with it. Then, build up from there as needed. If you choose not to hold your breath after exhaling, try doing so later on in the process, once you become more comfortable with this method and want more of a challenge. It's all about finding out what works best for each person's Chapter 19. How to Treat Asthma with Breathing Exercises You can use breathing exercises to treat asthma. Breathe in through your mouth and exhale through your nose. Do this slowly, deeply, and as often as you can throughout the day. Breathing slowly is important because it helps you relax and calm down for stressors that might trigger an asthma attack. Exhaling helps relieve symptoms of asthma attacks or flare-ups such as wheezing, coughing, or shortness of breath by removing trapped mucus from the lungs. Inhalation is also necessary for long-term lung health because it brings fresh oxygen into the lungs to replace carbon dioxide waste products that were removed during exhalation, breathing out. Chapter 20. How to Treat Insomnia and Sleep Apnea with Breathing Exercises If you're suffering from insomnia, you can treat your symptoms with a mixture of breathing exercises and physical exercise. Yoga is a great way to improve your breathing and sleep patterns, so make sure to incorporate some of it into your routine. Try this four-step breathing exercise. Inhale deeply through the nose while counting up to 12. Hold for one second at the top. Exhale slowly through pursed lips for six seconds or longer if possible. Relax completely before starting over. Chapter 21. Breathing is useful for focusing the mind. The mind is like a muscle and it requires exercise. In addition to practical breathing exercises, there are also many ways you can use breathing for more specific purposes. Meditation and yoga both involve using your breath to focus on the present moment and improve your mental state. Meditation can help you manage stress by allowing you to remain calm in stressful situations. Studies have shown that meditation can help reduce stress levels, which can improve concentration and promote clearer thinking. Yoga is also beneficial. It increases flexibility while also working out muscles and improving balance, as well as reducing tension in the body. Chapter 22. Using Breathing to Control Your Emotions In the great words of James Nestor, The first thing to do is to learn how to be relaxed. 
Breathing is your number one relaxation tool. In other words, breathing can be used for more than just giving your body oxygen. It can also help you calm down, relax, and deal with stress or anxiety in a healthy way. However, many people don't understand breathing well enough, not even doctors. Breathing helps us calm down because it sends a signal to our brains that we're safe and everything's all right. When we breathe slowly and deeply enough, the physiological responses come naturally as our bodies begin feeling less tense and more relaxed overall. This process allows us then to focus better on whatever situation we may be facing without getting overly stressed out or anxious about what might happen next. Chapter 23 It's important to breathe correctly while exercising. While exercising, it's important to know how to breathe correctly so you don't become lightheaded or pass out. Here's how. Breathe through your nose. This will help keep your airways clear while also keeping airborne bacteria at bay when working out outside or in a polluted area such as a gym or a public pool during flu season. If you're working out indoors at home, consider investing in an air purifier so that the air quality is clean. You can buy them online or at most hardware stores. They come with filters that need replacing every few months depending on usage or if you have pets. Inhale deeply through your nostrils and exhale completely through them as well. Do not hold back any air. Doing so constricts blood flow throughout the body, which can lead to dizziness or even fainting if done for long periods of time, more than five minutes. As we've seen in a previous chapter, some of the best breathing tips can be found in yoga, a practice that's been around for thousands of years. Yoga teaches us how to breathe properly, which is beneficial for both physical and mental health. About the author. The content in this guide is based on extensive official research and comes from a variety of sources, mostly from books published by experts who have mastered each of the topics presented here and who are backed by internationally recognized careers. Therefore, the reader will be able to acquire a large amount of knowledge from more than one reliable and specialized source. This happens because we rely only on official and endorsed media. In addition, we also collect information from different web pages, courses, biographies, and interviews. So we give the reader a broad overview of their topics of interest. We have not only checked that the sources of knowledge are relevant, but we have also made a very careful selection of the final information that makes up this guide. With great practicality, we have compiled the most useful concepts and put them in a way that are easiest for the reader to learn. Our ultimate goal is to simplify all the ideas so that they are fully understandable and so that the reader can enjoy a pleasant, practical, and simple reading. This is why we strive to provide only the key information from each expert. In this guide, the reader will not find redundancies or unnecessary or irrelevant content. Each chapter covers the essential and leaves out everything that could be deemed as extra or that does not add anything new to the selected concepts. Thus, the reader will be able to enjoy text where they will easily find specialized information that comes exclusively from experts and that has been selected with the greatest effectiveness. This is the end of this audiobook. The Sapiens Network presented The Power of Breath. Breathe properly to calm your mind, control your emotions, and take care of your health.